Hi, I'm Anna Lou. And in today's lesson, we're going to look at probability. MXL has probability under two areas of criteria. Understand probability on a scale from zero, impossible, to one, certain, and use probabilities to compare the likelihood of an event. And use equally likely outcomes to find probability of simple events and express them as fractions. The learning objectives according to NXL for this are understanding probability on a scale from 0 to 1, show probability as a fraction, and use equally likely outcomes to find the probability of single events. There's some key words that we're using today, and this is what we're going to be looking at throughout today's lesson. Likelihood, probability scale, 0 to 1 scale, impossible, unlikely, even chance, likely and certain. The most common misconceptions is misunderstanding the range of numbers allowed for probability and also not understanding that the single event divided by the total amount of events represents probability. So this is where most people lose marks. So what is probability? Probability is chance. It's the chance, the likelihood, the probability of something happening or not happening. In real life, it's used quite a lot. Weather predictions, the chance of rain, life expectancy, ordering in stores use probability as they often use the weather, etc. to um, predict the temperatures and therefore whether they should be ordering umbrellas or ice creams. Betting odds are all to do with probability as are sports performances in casino games. Risk assessments and medical predictions also use probability. Probability can be expressed on a probability line or a probability scale. Now this ranges from impossible all the way to certain. So impossible is the fact that there's no chance of that thing happening. Whereas certain is that it's the only thing that could happen. So it would be impossible for you to roll a six sided dice and get an eight. It would be certain that you would roll a six sided dice and get a whole number. So in between, we've got several different things. We've got unlikely, even chance and likely. Now, even chance or equally likely is like a heads or tails on a coin. There's a 50-50 chance that, you, that that's going to be the case. Unlikely is anything that's less than a 50% chance, but isn't impossible. And likely is anything between 51% and 99% chance. Now, probability can be expressed in words, fractions, decimals, or percentages. It's mostly expressed in words, fractions, and percentages, especially in real life. However, decimals can be used as well. So when we're looking at probability, we need to decide what the chance of that event occurring is. The way we find probability is if we go back to our example of a dice. If I rolled a dice, I've got six possible outcomes. I could roll a one, a two, a three, a four, a five, or a six. So to find the probability of the event of rolling a four. Now there's one way of rolling a four, and there's six possible outcomes. So the probability of rolling a four on a dice is one out of six. This is called theoretical probability because in theory, if we roll the dice six times, we should roll a four once. Now this needs to be expressed as a fraction. It needs to be expressed as one over six. We could not write, there's a one out of six chance. This is not the correct way to express probability. It would need to be expressed as a decimal, a fraction or a percentage. In the case of this, if we'd been asked to express this event as words, it would be unlikely because it's not impossible, but it's lower than even chance. Another example, to find the probability of the event of rolling an odd number on a dice, find the number of ways of getting an odd number, which is three, we could roll a one, a three or a five, and put it over the total number of things that could happen, which is still that we could roll a one, two, three, four, five or six. So there's three odd numbers out of six possible outcomes. So this is how we express probability. 
When we're expressing probability as a fraction, it's the number of ways the event occurs over the total number of possibilities. So as we've just looked at, the probability of rolling a four on a dice is one over six. The probability of picking a card at random out of a pack of cards and getting a heart is 13 over 52, as there's 13 cards in a deck which has a card which has a heart on it, and there's 52 cards in total. This can then be simplified to one quarter. We look at simplification of fractions in a different video. So the probability of event occurring as a fraction is always the number of ways that event can occur over the total number of possibilities. Let's have a look at some examples. At level one, we're either asked to express it as a word or as a fraction. If we needed to express it as a word, it will give us the multiple choice options. If those options are not there, it wants it in a different format. So let's look at this question. So there's a lucky dip for children at a cafe on Monday. Each child who has a go on the dip wins a prize. There are a total of 40 prizes and the prizes are 20 red lollipops, 10 green lollipops, 5 yellow lollipops and 4 blue lollipops. Bradley is the first child to have a go. What is the likelihood that Bradley wins a blue lollipop? Now if we look back up, there are 5 blue lollipops in total. And there are a total of 40 lollipops, which I can confirm because 20 plus 10 plus 5 plus 5 give me 40. So the chance that Bradley is going to win a blue lollipop is there's 5 blue lollipops and 40 lollipops out in total. So there's a 5 out of 40 chance, or 5 fortieths, that Bradley is going to win a blue lollipop. Now for it to be even chance, it would need to be a half. Now, to express a half over 40, it would be 20 over 40. Again, we look at fractions in a different video. Certain would be 40 over 40, so if there was only blue lollipops. And impossible would be zero, so if there was no blue lollipops. Now, 5 over 40, is it's not impossible, but it's lower than even chance, so therefore it's unlikely. Let's have a look at another example. So Don needs to pick a local charity to give some money to. He has these charities to pick from. Cat's Home, Local Hospital, Children's Centre or Dog's Home. Don picks a charity at random. What's the likelihood that Don picks an animal home? Well, we've got a cat's home, a local hospital, a children's centre or a dog's home. So the cat's home and the dog's home are both animal charities. So there's two animal charities and there's a total of four charities. So the likelihood that Don picks an animal home is two over four, which can be simplified to a half. Now, as we know, a half is even chance, so 50-50. Let's have a look at another one. Ramesh is going to open his shop tomorrow. He has 24 stickers in a bag. Six red, six blue, six yellow and six green. Ramesh plans to give a sticker to each child who comes in the shop. He will pick a sticker at random. How likely is it that Ramesh will give a white sticker to the first child who enters the shop? Now we've got six red, six blue, six yellow and six green. But we don't have any white stickers. So therefore, it's impossible that Ramesh is going to give a white sticker. Let's have a look at another one. So Jean has baked 30 cupcakes. 15 cupcakes are lemon and 15 cupcakes are chocolate. Jean picks a cupcake at random to decorate it with buttercream. What's the likelihood of the cupcake being lemon? Explain why you think this. One mark. Now we've got 15 lemon cupcakes. And we've got 30 cupcakes all together, so the likelihood of it being lemon is 15 over 30. As we know, probability is the event that we're looking for over the total number of events. So there's 15 lemon cupcakes and 30 cupcakes in total. So 15 out of 30 would give us that mark. If we wanted, we could also simplify that to show that it's a half. As I said, simplifying fractions are shown in another video. 
This could be expressed as a fraction. I do have a video on the conversion of fractions to decimals and percentages. Um, so it could also be expressed as a decimal, which would be 0 0.5, or as a percentage, which would be 50%. But in order to get our one mark, 15 out of 30 is what we need to write. Any of these would also get us our mark. What would not get us our mark is writing the fact that it's even chance. Because it's left us, because it hasn't given us the um, options, it wants it in numerical format. So we would not get a mark for that. Let's have a look at one more in regards to probability. And then we're going to look at the probability of things not happening. So Jenny's the assistant manager in a leisure centre. She asked some of the leisure centre users to complete a questionnaire. It was completed by 25 people who were swimming, 8 who were playing squash and 11 who were in the fitness centre. She picks a questionnaire at random. What's the probability it was completed by someone playing squash? Two marks. Now there's 8 people playing squash. So this is the, these are the people that we're looking at. Now we need to work out the total amount of people. So 25 plus 8 plus 11 gives us 44. So there's an 8 out of 44 chance that it's completed by someone playing squash. The mark scheme for this is showing that we're getting one mark for the 8, and the second mark is for the 44. So we're showing that we have done that additional addition that we needed to get the bottom number. If you did simplify this to 2 over 11, that is also allowed but not needed. Now that we've looked at the probability of events happening, let's look at the probability of them not happening. So as we know, probability always adds up to 1. We know the chance, if we know the chance that something will happen, we can use that information to find out the chance that it won't happen. So if there's an 80% chance there's going to be no delays on your drive to work tomorrow, then there's going to be a 20% chance that there will be delays. Because 100% take away 80% gives us 20%. And there's a 100% chance that we will go to work. It's the same when using fractions or decimals. If it's 0 0.8, that it will happen, it'll be 0 0.2 that it won't. 1 take away 0 0.8 gives us 0 0.2. The same with fractions. If there's an 8 out of 10 chance it will happen, there's a 2 out of 10 chance it won't. 1 take away 8 out of 10 gives me 2 out of 10. So probability always adds up to 1. So let's have a look at some examples. So Thomas plans to work in his garden on the day when it's least likely to rain. He checks the weather forecast. Thomas plans to work in his garden on Tuesday. What is the probability that it will not rain on Tuesday? Now this is the probability of rain. So we know there's a 12% chance that it will rain. So there's a 100% chance that it either will rain or won't rain. So by doing 100 take away 12, we get 88. So there's an 88% chance that it will not rain on Tuesday. Let's have a look at one last example. The probability of rain on the day of the race is 62%. What's the probability it does not rain? Now, if there's a 62% chance, then we need to take 62 away from 100, which is 38. So there's a 38% chance it does not rain on the day of the race. So that's probability. We need to be able to express probability by selecting a word, writing it as a fraction, and looking at the probability that events do not occur. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching.